Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to another book of the month reading vlog. This is a series I do on my channel to keep up with the book of the month books that I get every month. I am not sponsored by book of the month. I'm just a regular old member, but I love making these vlogs to keep up with the books I pick so that they don't pile up and also to get out some reviews and opinions of Book of the Month books in case any of you are members and are deciding whether or not to pick these books, add them onto future boxes, or if you already picked them, if you should prioritize reading them, etc. I'm very excited about the books that I am reading for this video. They are my January and February book picks. Seems like it's gonna be a little thriller heavy, which I'm excited for. Definitely in the mood for fast paced thrillers at the moment. And not only that, but this is going to be a fast paced week and reading vlog because today is Monday and the this Friday, my husband and I are leaving for a cruise, which I am so excited for. I'm so excited to go get some sun, some relaxation, some uninterrupted reading time, but I'm not really planning on doing any vlogging and definitely no editing while I'm there. So I wanna get some content pre-made and pre-uploaded, and I'm hoping that I can get this vlog done in time. So I have three books to read in the next four-ish days, which should be doable as long as all goes according to plan. But this week outside of reading, I'm just going to be really focused on working, getting my work stuff figured out so I can be out of the office for six work days, getting my husband and me packed for the trip, of course, and then getting my kids ready. They're gonna go stay with my husband's parents for the week, so we need to pack all of their stuff as well. So a busy week, but a very exciting week, and hopefully a good reading week. So let's talk about the books that I will be reading. The one book I picked in January is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I believe this is a mystery thriller about a group of girls who were in the woods and somebody like attacked them, like a serial killer or something, and they banded together to testify against the guy put him into prison, but now things are coming out that maybe they picked the wrong guy or it wasn't actually him and they were lying the whole time. Not really sure on the details, gonna go in fairly blind, but I've heard good things about this author. My friend Jesse read this book and really liked it. So I have high expectations and am probably planning on picking this one up first. Once I finish that book, I will get into my February picks. First of all, I picked, again, The Thriller, The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This is a debut novel. It sounds pretty self-explanatory about this author that goes to this writing retreat. I'm not sure what happens when she's there, but I'm assuming scary things, like either people start turning up dead or they find out they're in danger or someone at the writing retreat isn't who they say they are, something like that. I've seen my friend Lena from Lena's Bookshelf really not liking this book, so I'm a little hesitant to go into it. But I know that with thrillers, it really is such a personal genre. Things do and don't connect with certain readers. So I'm hoping that just because I'm seeing one of my friends have a bad experience doesn't mean that I have the same experience, and I'm hoping I, for some reason, really like it. And then the third book that I will be reading, I added on to my box in February, and I added it on knowing almost nothing about it. Honestly, knowing nothing about it. It is The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. I believe on Book of the Month, this was shelved as literary fiction. I know I've heard somebody give a good review of this and that's why I added it to my box, but I can't remember who it was or where their review was or why I thought I would like this book, but I thought I would. So I decided to give it a try. This showed up in the mail and my jaw dropped. This is huge. And so I am very intimidated by it and nervous to go into it, but I'm gonna do it. I have it from Book of the Month and it's a huge priority for me to stay on top of my Book of the Month books. So so I'm not putting it off. I'm just really scared about what I'm getting into. I think this is the author of American Psycho, which I have not read, but is obviously a very popular kind of modern classic. So I guess that leads me to believe the writing in this should be pretty good, but no idea what the plot is about, no idea what actual genre it is. I am just going to dive in. I will let you guys know how it goes. Let me just get a little peek into what the front flap synopsis says. At the very top, it says, a sensational new novel from the best-selling author of Less Than Zero and American Psycho that tracks a group of privileged, lost Los Angeles high school friends as a serial killer strikes across the city. Okay, friends hunting a serial killer? I can do that. That sounds a little bit up my alley. So hoping that this keeps my attention and that it is worth the almost 600 pages that it takes up. We will see you guys, we will see. So we are going to go ahead and get on with it. I'm gonna start my first book on audio. I will be working the majority of the day, but I also want to run a couple of quick errands to get some things for the cruise. So I'll take you along for all of that and I will give you a reading update when I have it.
All right, I am back with my first update. It's the next day. I am sitting on the floor because I am currently attempting to self tan in preparation for the vacation. And I don't wanna accidentally get anything on our couch or anything. So I have read a lot since I last checked in. Uh, yesterday I did end up reading the entirety of What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I was listening to the audiobook through Scribd, so I was able to put it on two and a half to three times speed throughout the day and it just read really quickly. I generally enjoyed this one. I would most recommend this book to fans of Stacey Willingham, especially A Flicker of the Dark reminded me a lot of this book just because it did follow the storyline of there was a serial killer who was convicted and put away and now there's reason to believe that they were the wrong person. And other than that, my original synopsis of this pretty much proved to be true. It was about these three girls who were in the woods together. One of them was attacked in the woods and stabbed a whole bunch of times. And then the other two girls escaped the woods, called for help. They thought their friend was dead in the woods, but she did end up living. So the three of them are adults now. They were the ones who had all testified against this one guy and put him in prison. He ended up dying in prison. And that's what kind of stirred up the attention on him and this whole case. That small element also reminded me of The It Girl by Ruth Ware because it's a similar thing. Guy got put away, dies in prison, case gets dug back up. There's also a podcast element in here. We don't really hear the podcast itself, but there is a guy who is a podcast host who looks into true crime cases and he's in town looking for information on this case to feature it on his podcast. And in general, this was enjoyable to me. I flew through it, obviously, and it did keep my attention. It was all pretty clear and straightforward. There were a lot of male characters and specifically male characters with like the most basic white boy names like Ethan, Cody, Oscar, Mitch. There's a Jim, but I think he was a little bit older. There's a Marcus. So all of those names and people blended together a little bit in my mind and maybe it's because I was listening to the audio and not reading it physically. But overall, I was surprised at some things in the ending. I was not surprised about others. So it was a pretty solid mystery thriller. Probably would put it at like three and a half stars. I might have to sit with it for a couple days to see how it resonates with me and if the details stick in my mind, maybe I can solidify it as a four star. But if things start to fade and it's forgettable to me, then it may bump down to three stars. But again, solid. So if that's all you're looking for in a thriller is just a fun, satisfying time, I do think it is worth picking up. Now I am also in the middle of the writing retreat. I started this last night and have been listening to it a bit more this morning. I did go ahead and get this book's audiobook through Book of the Month. I knew I wanted to try using that app and that platform so that I could provide some reviews of it. I do think it's a little frustrating that you have to use a whole credit to get the audiobook, even if you have already purchased the physical through Book of the Month or even elsewhere. It would be really awesome if it was like a discounted audiobook with your hardcover purchase. But I also understand audiobooks can't be free. They take time and resources. I did have credits to spare. I got a lot of credits gifted to me for Christmas and my birthday. So I've got a lot of credits in the app. I decided to go ahead and use one. So far, the audiobook interface is fine. It seems to be working well, no glitches or anything. The speed does only go up to two times speed, which is a little bit of a bummer for me. If I'm listening to an audiobook throughout my day, I can usually bump it up to like 2.5. And then if I'm ever also reading physically and just listening along while reading, then I can bump it up even higher, usually to three times or even faster. So it is a small drawback that it doesn't go up that high. So since I have the physical and the audio and it only goes up to two times, I've just been listening to it and not reading along physically. So just wanted to put that out there. It does also appear that after buying five audiobooks through credits, you do get a free credit. So I guess that's nice if you are a frequent audiobook user, but again, using a credit every time for both a hardcover and audiobook definitely adds up to the price to 30 plus dollars, which on one hand is as much as a brand new hardcover book would cost in a regular bookstore, but still it does seem a little steep to spend that every time on the books. As far as this story, this is uh, like I assumed about an author who gets invited to this writing retreat by one of her favorite authors, which is a really great opportunity for her. She's hoping it helps her kind of break out into publishing and getting her name out as an author. Uh, there is a lot more in here though about friendship dynamics, which I was not 
not expecting. This main character has a former best friend who was also a writer. I think they met in college in their writing majors. They were best friends for years and then something happened to drive them apart. They had a falling out and she finds out that that ex-best friend is also going to this retreat. And as someone who has also gone through a friend breakup or a falling out with a really close best friend, it's been interesting to listen to this book. I'm not disliking it and I'm not, you know, triggered or anything by it. Uh, I actually think it's a really interesting conversation that I have not really read in books before, but can be a really tough thing to go through. So it's interesting that it's being tackled in this thriller. And um, other than that, this writing retreat, when they get there, they realize it's going to be a lot more rigorous than they were expecting. And this really famous author is really expecting a lot out of them, which will ultimately be a good thing for them. It'll push them as writers and they'll come out with hopefully a manuscript that they're really proud of. There's also this prize involved for like the best writer to come out of this retreat. But as the book is going along, it just is getting a little bit weirder and weirder. It's pushing them more and more. The people at the retreat are starting to wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye, if this famous author is who she says she is, or what her motives and intents are with hosting this retreat. So at this point, I'm about halfway through and I'm intrigued. I'm not like on the edge of my seat. It's definitely slower paced. It's not a page turner thriller, but I'm just curious to see what comes out of it. One last note is this is definitely spicier than I was expecting because thrillers are not often explicit or spicy, but this one definitely has its moments. So if that is something you do not want to read, definitely proceed with caution if you're picking this one up. We have multiple explicit moments happening throughout this book. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to reading that one throughout today. Should hopefully finish it before the end of the day and I can give an update and then I can dive into the shards. Otherwise, just continuing to get work done and get laundry done and prep for the trip and everything. So I'll be back with another reading update once I have it. Okay, update time. I finished the writing retreat. I actually liked it. Um, I don't know why I had it in my mind that this was getting negative reviews. Um, I've been on Goodreads now since finishing this book and actually a lot of people I have as friends on Goodreads have given this four or five stars, but my friend Lena from Lena's Bookshelf, I know just read this and I think gave it one star and she's been talking about it on sprints and stuff. So I think I just had that fresh in my mind and was thinking overall this was getting negative reviews, but I'm glad to see there are some positive reviews because I do think this is something different and it's gonna be the type of something different that some people are really going to love and other people are really going to hate. This is definitely not just a formulaic, isolated, closed circle mystery. It goes a bit deeper, it goes a bit darker than I think a lot of those do. And I liked the themes that it explored. I really liked what I already mentioned about like the friendship dynamics in here and the breakup of a friendship and trying to mend that, as well as all of the new relationships that were formed between the people attending this retreat. The main like author lady was a very interesting character and I liked her whole development. Uh, this book I would say is a little bit more similar to Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty, which is also a book about uh, people who go to this retreat. That one is a wellness retreat, so it has nothing to do with writing. And that book definitely goes in a different direction. It's not the same thing that's happening, but it's similar in that it's a retreat that's not what it seems. Again, I will just say that it's darker and spicier than I was expecting. So if that's going to bother you, maybe skip this one. But I can see this being the type of book that when people review it and talk about it, it's gonna make other people want to read it just to know what's going on. And I feel like that's valid. I like reading books like that too. When I hear people talk vaguely about thrillers and horror books and they're saying it's not what it seems. I get curious about that. So I can see why this would also do that. And I'm curious to hear more people's thoughts and opinions come out as more reviews come out. And I would definitely read more by this author. I liked the fact that it's a book about writing and a book about books. I don't love the insertion of 
a book being written inside a book. Like this had chapters from the manuscript that our main character was writing. And I don't feel like that adds a lot. Maybe I'm just not very good at connecting like the parallels between what's happening in that story and what's happening in the main plot. And maybe there was more connection there than I saw. But to me, those chapter inserts didn't do a whole lot and I kind of glazed by those but the rest of it had me pretty entertained. So I am gonna give it four stars. But okay, now on to my final book for this video, this chunky, chunky boy. I'm gonna start it on audio. We will see how it goes. Hopefully I can speed it up quite a bit so I get through it at a reasonable pace, but I have no thoughts for you yet because I have not started it yet. I have been packing as you've seen. I have all of my clothes in packing cubes and just need to make sure it fits in my luggage. I have some clothes and things out that I will need earlier in the trip, but that is going well. I'm going to pause where I'm at and get back to work for a little bit because it is still my work day, but I'm gonna get started on that audiobook, do some work, hopefully have an update shortly with maybe a synopsis of the shards and we will just keep plugging through this video. Hello everyone, it is the next day and I am coming at you with some unfortunate news. And that is that I am not going to be reading the shards, at least right now. I am going to keep it. I will attempt it again in the future, but I made this decision last night after I had showered, I was laying in bed, I was cozying up for a late night of reading and I opened up the book and it starts with this kind of prologue that is a little unclear if it's directly from the author or if it's about the main character because in the synopsis here, it says the main character is named Brett with one T, as in the same as the author. And this prologue is all about uh, like wanting to write this book but not being in the right headspace to be able to write it. So he put it off for decades because it was too, the, the situation was too fresh in his mind until like 2020, then it came to him. But again, I'm not clear if this is like an actual author's note or if this is part of the story. This is the main character talking. I'm not sure, but then it goes into the actual timeline of the story, which starts in fall of 1981, and it goes into chapter one. And let me read you the official first sentence of this book. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon before Labor Day in 1981, and our senior year was about to begin on that Tuesday morning of September 8th. And I remember that the Windover stables were located on a bluff above Malibu, where Deborah Schaefer was boarding her new horse, Spirit, in one of the 20 separate barns where animals were housed. And I remember I was driving solo, following Susan Reynolds and Tom Wright in Tom's convertible Corvette along Pacific Coast Highway, the ocean dimly shimmering beside us in the humid air until we reached the turnoff that took us to the stables. And I remember I was listening to the cars. The song was Dangerous Type on a mixtape I'd made that included Blondie, the babies, Duran Duran, as I kept behind Tom's car up the winding road to the entrance to the stables where we parked next to Deborah's gleaming brand new BMW, the only car in the lot on that Sunday, and then checked in at the front office and where we followed a tree-lined trail until we located Debbie trotting spirit by his reins around a gated arena that was deserted. She had already ridden him, but the saddle was still on and she was wearing her riding attire. That was all one sentence. It literally spans the majority of this first paragraph until like there. That is insanity to me to write that long of a sentence. And I feel like, of course it's intentional. It's gonna be the writing style of the book. Very wordy, very descriptive, very stream of consciousness. And I just can't read that right now. This is the second video in a row where I'm not reading one of the books I said I was gonna read. And it was for a similar reason because I was just not in the mood for a slow paced historical fiction. In this case, I am not in the mood for a slow paced and extremely long literary fiction. And I think it's doing myself a disservice to read this book when I'm not feeling it and when I can't devote a good amount of time to reading it and understanding it. I know that this book has really good reviews. I am interested in it, but the reality is I'm leaving for a vacation tomorrow. I am absolutely not taking this on vacation because look at this chunky thing. Think of how much weight this would add to my luggage. And I definitely don't want to start it and then take eight days off and then try to resume it. So I am just going to soft DNF this book. I've never DNF'd a book on page one before, but here we are. And I'm gonna have to save this for another time. 
I really don't want to make it a habit of talking about books in the intros of my videos and then not actually reading them. I don't feel like that's helpful to all of you guys watching, but I hope in this case you can understand why it's just not the right time. And this video will be better if I just Put that away for now, publish this video as is so that I can get this edited quickly today, get it scheduled for when I'm on vacation, and then I can be sharing my thoughts on the two thrillers that I read. And if you are someone who is looking forward to me talking about this book, I do greatly apologize. Please let me know if that's the case so that I know if there's interest in me following this back up and reading this in a future video. But I really hope it makes sense why I'm doing that. And I know it is the right choice because I posted on my Instagram stories last night as soon as this happened. I'll go ahead and post the story that I posted, but I took a picture of the first page, I underlined the entire first sentence, and I asked if other people saw this as the first sentence of the book they were picking up. Would they continue reading the book? And at the time that I'm filming this clip, 96% of people have said, good lord no, they would not continue on. And then in the next story I asked, does knowing this book is almost 600 pages long change your answer? And it shifted it even more towards not finishing it as 98% said it doesn't seem worth it and only 2% said I'd still read it, which is actually only one vote. So I'm not alone in that first sentence being kind of a turnoff to the book in general, plus combined with the overall length and my time constraints here, I do feel like it's absolutely the right decision for me. I just feel a little bit guilty for this video's sake. But let's go ahead and wrap up the two books that I did read for this video. Started with What Lies in the Woods by K. Alice Marshall. I ended up giving this one three stars. I am comfortable sticking with that as the rating. It's only been a couple days since I finished this book and the details are definitely starting to fade. And I don't have any really strong feelings about this book's story or the twists or anything that are pushing me towards a higher rating. So I'm gonna go with three stars. I think it's solid, but nothing special to me personally. And then The Writing Retreat, by Julia Bartz. I'm sticking with four stars. This I think will leave a lasting impression on me. Really just the overall like tone and direction of this book and the friendship themes that it explored. It was something different in my opinion from other basic mystery thrillers. So I'm really glad I gave this one a chance and I'm talking about it here. So with that let me know if you have read either of these two books and if you agree with my opinions or you disagree or let me know if either of these books are on your TBR. I again am keeping this book. I will read it at at some point in the future. I'm not sure when that is. It will depend when I have a good solid probably week to devote to reading that book slowly and understanding it. But let me know if this is a book you are interested in hearing my thoughts on. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.